to growth and why should cities make it central to their economic development strategies? You know, I'll start with the why. As Jason Wright said yesterday, diverse teams get better financial results. I am not a social justice person, I'm a results person. And the results have to be socially just, good. Okay? So I, I am all about this idea of, of just gaining as much market share as possible, leaving no stone unturned, and the structures that we put in place for nonsensical reasons that make no economic sense, they're just not sustainable anymore. I don't care what your ism is, it doesn't make sense in business. Never about business, let's be about it. And that means you've got to put as many people as possible to the table. So when we say inclusive growth, we literally mean that, inclusive. And it starts with intention. You've got to be intentional about it, or rooms like this don't happen. Ross, how do you understand um, inclusive growth? Well, thanks, Nick, and thanks, uh, Cordell, for bringing this all together. Uh, I mean, at Heartland Forward, our mission is really to try and improve economic performance in the center of the country, and you can't do that without thinking about inclusive growth. So I wrote a, a short piece, unlike some of my dissertation-length articles for Aspen a couple months ago, looking at how do you build wealth, and I talk about what I call the four forms of capital, we could really call them five forms. But one of those pillars is entrepreneurship and access to capital. And I first want to make some comments about that. Um, we, we did a big study a couple of years ago looking at the importance of having uh, high startup rates and high scale up rates in communities in terms of companies that are started and kind of reaching middle market status eventually. And I'll bear you all the econometric details, but basically it boils down to this. If you look across metropolitan areas and micropolitan areas and smaller communities, um, your ability to start and scale up companies really determines your community's ability to create jobs for people, and people of all types. And so basically it boils down to this. Um, think about ways you can measure entrepreneurial ecosystems. One way to do so is to look at employment at young firms, five years of age or less, right? It's a share of the total uh, employment base. And we call that the young firm ratio. Um, and then another measure to try and capture some of that, what we call the knowledge intensity of those young firms, you look at those young firms that have a high proportion of employees with bachelor's degrees or above. It's typically a good indicator of that, and so we're able to do that. So we went through all the statistical analysis, and what it says is this. If you can increase um, the share of young firms with jobs in the communities, the share of the total by 10 percentage points, so from 15 to 25 percent, uh, over the course of a decade, you can increase job growth by two percentage points, and that's 20 percent, right? So that may not sound like a lot, but it makes a huge difference at the margin. Then if you look at the knowledge intensity, or those firms that tend to scale up and become mid-cap companies. If you can increase the proportion of employees at those young firms as a measure of the knowledge intensity by 10 percentage points, so from 20% to 30%, over the course of a decade, you can double job growth in your community. And most economic developers do not understand this. And here's where you get into the issues of diversity. Here's the short version of it. So in the United States, um, there are still clear disparities in access to capital and access to entrepreneurship. Uh, blacks in the United States, only 0.24% start a company in any given year. That's less than half of whites, substantially below Latinos as well. And so if you're not part of the entrepreneurial economy, you're not building wealth. And here's a, a statistic that's generally not discussed in the United States, and I hope that's one of my missions is to change that. Um, if you look at black entrepreneurs and white entrepreneurs, there is no difference in looking at social mobility among those groups, those families. Now, if you look at it in terms of the workforce, huge disparities, but blacks coming from the same social economic background as whites have the same ability to build wealth in those families through entrepreneurship. And this is an underappreciated discussion taking place in the United States, and that's part of our mission to do that. Uh, 
Jennifer, maybe pick up where, where Ross left off. Recent research um, out of MIT has identified a correlation between the tech industry and rising inequality. Talk about ways in which tech can be marshaled to reduce inequality. I, I think part of the reason we're excited to be in this room today is actually answering that question why we partner with folks like Cordell and folks like Ross on, on these issues. So we have to get our communities ready for the future economy. A lot of them, especially in the heartland, and, and I'm excited, so thrilled Ross is here with us today. In our part of the country, we are not ready. And we are so far behind the eight ball that investments like ours, the ones that our philanthropy, you saw Ashley and Brian Burkeen up here with us yesterday, have to be made at pretty seismic scales to kind of correct where we are um, headed. And so when we think about the tech economy, really what that means is, do we have the skills? Do our people have the skills, to, to Ross's point? How do we kind of raise those boats and get people ready for what's to come. And what's really scary is, is how do we position this as an opportunity um, as much as it is, quite frankly, as a threat to a lot of our communities. And so we're working really hard to figure out like what is the opportunity, who are the partners we need to coalesce to make these things happen, and then how do we pull together the investments to really take us to that next level. Um, because it's, it's, to Ross's point, it's not going to happen on its own. Um, we all have to come together and say, this is the future. This is the tech economy, and this is how you build that in your local community. And so, thinking about the panel we had yesterday, what are the ingredients in each individual community? Anybody can build a tech cluster, I think is a lot of Ross's work. Um, how you do that, and how you do that at each individual authentic local level, is really what we're up here to kind of talk to you about, about how it can be done anywhere, really. Great segue, we didn't plan it, but <laughs> promise. Um, let's double click on some of kind of the key ingredients.